All right, welcome to another unboxing video. For this video, we are going to be unboxing Raptalia from Tate no Yusha no Nariagari or The Rising of the Shield Hero. And this figure is the 1-7 scale. She's about a little bit over 9 inches tall. And she's made by a very famous company, Kotobukiya. She was re-released in October 6th. And I received her actually back in October 18th. This was back when I didn't really decide to uh, make unboxing videos. I purchased her off of Amiyami.com. So it was 647200 yen for DHL shipping. She cost 13,390 yen. And altogether, I paid about $177. So I did pay a little bit more than what US prices are listed as, but that's the price you pay sometimes if you want to grab something really early. That's just how it rolls. But yeah, before I start unboxing the video, please like the video if you haven't already. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm at 18 subscribers now. So I'm very, very happy that even just a handful of you guys are finding my videos or and liking it. Please, if you guys have any questions or have any suggestions, I want to do a good job. I want to make a good video and I want to just you know, do better in general. So I really, really appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And also I have a TikTok. I just posted a video about this new Funko Pop that I received. Please check out my blog at otakusen.com. Anything I missed in the in this video, I will be updating that on the blog. If anything in the future happens with these figures, I will also be updating that there. I also cover new animes that's been coming out. So if you want to go check out and see what my thoughts are, go ahead and do so there. And then one more thing, this figure did come in that 120 size uh, box in the Amiyami box. I did take the pictures on the day I got it, so I will be uploading that as well. So yeah, let's just unbox this figure. With a lot of these figures, they have the, they just put like little tape on the sides. Sometimes when you do buy these figures that have like just these little circle like tape, over time it loses its adhesiveness and it falls off. So that's one thing I noticed. Most people don't care about that stuff, but some people like me care about that. But as a collector, that might be something that would bother you. So let's just go ahead and open this. Here's what the inside of the box looks like. Looks like we have the instructions right here. Here is the instructions. If you watch my videos, you know I love instructions no matter how dumb it is that I can't pick, put things together. The instructions, very, very important. Here you have Raptalia. It looks like she comes already on the base. If you look at her packaging, it looks like the plastic is like right here. So I guess maybe she comes off and then you could pull out the, the plastic, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm just going to cut. I'm just going to cut the plastic.
no safer way than just cutting it straight off. I was hoping to take this off while she's on there, but the plastic is kind of there, so I have to take her off. All right, let's get her back on there. All right, let's get her sword together and then let's put on her tail. There are two different swords that you can use. I'm gonna go with the more four leaf clover one. And then it looks like this, for this sword, you just take out this bottom part. We're just going to slip it right through her hand. You kind of just have to fidget around with her hand to kind of get it to fit, get it to, to align, to get it to fit through. You see it protruding out a little bit, the back end of her sword, that handle part. So it should be able to fit the little back piece. All right, it looks like it's that simple. Here we have her tail. In her, in the back, you kind of see the little hole. It's kind of hard to see with their hair in the way, but this tail, it kind of goes down. Just be careful a little bit when you put on her tail because her hair is like totally in the way. Yeah, just be careful because anything could chip, the paint could chip, the hair could fall, you know, you, who knows. When they make figures, it's never like perfect. So you kind of have to work with what they manufactured or produce. So this is not that big of a deal. And that's it. She is done. All right, let's talk about this figure. So I got this figure from uh, AmiAmi.com, about $177. DHL shipping was about 6,400 yen. And then her price point, she cost about 13,390 yen. So if you got her from a retail, like a US retail store, you could possibly get her cheaper. And let's say you got her, uh, if you have her pre-order off like Entertainment Earth, she's she's about $164.99. But if you have a coupon, usually Entertainment Earth, they give a lot of like $15 off with free shipping. So I think the best deal if you're trying to get it from a US store is going to be that Entertainment Earth. Unless you have another coupon from another website like Ukiyo uh, Kumo or something like that. Yeah, if you get her overseas, you are going to pay pretty much the same if you you're going with the DHL EMS route. So if you want to get the slower shipping, you know, that one to three months plus, she's probably gonna, you're probably gonna save like a good $30. So overall, you she's anywhere between maybe the 130 to about what I paid, uh, which is like $177. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that is what you're gonna end up paying for. Overall, the figure she's like 177 scale let me grab the measuring tape real quick she's pretty much at nine inches she might be a little bit shorter or maybe even a little bit taller it's kind of hard to tell with the angle she's pretty much gonna fit in any detox display she's gonna fit anywhere but yeah i got her back in october and october this is like one of my first scales ever that i, I received and it's nice to finally get here outside of the box Let's talk about Kotobukiya figures real quick. I think that company and their, their scales, their, you know, I like to call it Art FX, <laughs> is uh, a lot of like their line of scale figures. To me, they are a great barometer of 
how much you should be paying for a scale figure for look at her her base her base is freaking amazing you don't need to do too much to make a figure look amazing and the base with the the balloon you got the little rocks the little stones that's in the back like it's really really cool how they made her base and then the body of her figure it's it's great the detail there's a lot of detail in this like i could see like a, a company like i don't like like eStream or something like they would be probably selling this towards closer to 300 dollars for this figure with shipping and everything if you get it from a u.s store but i could see her being sold for like two hundred dollars without shipping so kotobukiya in my eyes is is that barometer the better their quality is and the lower their price is the more you know you make that judgment towards these other figures but one thing is sometimes it, you know you have licensing agreements and that type of thing maybe certain companies are not allowed to make certain figures or they haven't bought the rights so those are the things that kind of make things difficult for a consumer to to decide how much how much is it for us to pay for a figure that isn't uh, uh, super inflated so in my eyes Kota Bukia figures is kind of like the the barometer for scale figures in terms of their quality because after a price figure what you'll run into is like okay let's get closer to hundred dollars you're gonna get Figma uh, figures so they're more of like action figures with a lot of replaceable parts. And then after that, you get Kotobukiya figures, their scale figures. So you could get it anywhere from like 100 to 200, depending on how they make the figure, what, what's going on with the figure, the prototype, the base, how much more intricate is it? And in my, in my eyes, again, I keep saying that, that, that phrase, this Raftality figure is like, top of the line what i want all my scales to to be at least at this quality so far looking through the painting and everything there isn't too much little def defects on her kind of like dress i guess that's what you uh, dress skirt there is a little bit of like a paint chip but i mean i kind of just like rubbed it off there's some paint that kind of got on her skirt yeah, it looks like I could just probably just rub that off. But overall, the way it's manufactured, the details, this is what I would deem the standard scale. And this is what I compared everything else that I buy is to those line of Kota Bukia figures because they kind of set, I don't want to say standard again, they kind of set the level of expectations of what you should be getting out of a scale figure. So I love this figure. You could still buy it from basically anywhere right now. This is, man, I got this back in October. It's February 14th, Valentine's Day. So I'm also getting the her childhood version of the the remanufactured b full version. And let's go straight into the box real quick. I love when companies do really well with their box. Uh, if you watched my last video about eStream, eStream is... You know, their boxes are, you know, if I had to judge between this this box and then an eStream box, this Kota Bukia one is actually better than eStream's, their packaging. This to me is on, it's on par or slightly bigger because I love the cutout of the shield. I don't think that it's going to cost them too much to do cutouts like this, but doing something you know, just the little details in a box in the packaging goes a long way in the overall quality and the overall feel of when you receive something. When you receive something, it all starts with taking it outside the box or receiving the box and, and you want to feel like you're getting your money's worth. And for a figure that you get anywhere from like probably 130 to like almost 180, this is a perfect box. I love Kotobukiya because of how what they provide as, as as a standard for scales and quality. And it all starts from the very the, the box to the figure to the base, everything about Kotobukiya. It, it it just shows you what the market is looking for, you know, in that in that mid-tier, that above that fig those Figma price ranges, above the price scales. These are the figures besides uh, like maybe the figure arts. Um, 
I actually have like a couple of Demon Slayer um, figures that I haven't opened yet from Crunchyroll. But um, Kotobukiya, the painting is on point, the, the pose is on point, the, the figure is on point, the base is on point, the packaging is on point, the, the price point for the figures is on point. It's one of the most affordable or the affordable scale that you can get and they are the barometer or what you should expect to pay for a scale figure of this quality. The better they are, the more the other company is going to struggle putting a higher price point for their figures. So it's either Kotobuki has to increase their prices or the other companies got to, you know, lower it a little bit because Kotobuki, they, they do a superb job at keeping their quality and their prices low. And when they actually do something to the base, make it intricate, add more, um, I don't want to say quality, add more intricacies to the overall scene. You know, when you make a figure, you want to kind of see the scene that they're in. You know, you don't want something basic like a like a, a small little acrylic base or just a plain black base. Those are things that I would attribute to a price figure. So anytime you get a scale, I would love to see the, uh, those statue figures have those those nice base. Do something. Just just do something. Just don't put it on just a basic plastic black base or acrylic clear base. Don't do that. Do something else to make it to add more value to that figure in the scene that they're in. And again, yo, I love this figure. I the prototype. It was amazing. The figure, seeing it in person is amazing. Her face, she looks exactly like Raptalia. Uh, the sculpting was on point. And let me just give a shout out to the sculptor. So the artist is Matsumoto Koe. So yeah, shout out to Matsumoto Koe for sculpting this figure. And she looks amazing. I don't really have anything else really to say. She was re-released. Back in October, her original release was January 29th of 2020. So I could see her being re-released again with the new season coming up. And one thing I also hope that happens is my hope is in this new season, we get a scale figure of this guy. This guy now for me. So I'm not a person that, that gets Figma figures, but sometimes when they don't make uh, the figures in the size or the style that I want, you kind of just have to settle. And I settled for this now for me, uh, Figma right here. So I hope that we, after this next season, that we get a cool scale figure of now for me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like the video if you guys haven't already. Please subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Check out my TikTok. I do other unboxings there in really, really short formats. Check out my blog at otakusin.com. You know, that's where uh, anything I miss about the figures, I'm going to update it there. If anything happens in the future, I will update that same blog with whatever happened. And I also cover other animes like Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan. So go ahead and check that out. And I appreciate you guys watching. Please like the video again. And I'll see you guys on the next video.